Make a towel, monk. Hey guys, I wanted to talk today about something a little serious, which is, um, can America be saved? And also, what is our position in the fall of America? I think you have to realize that this feminist insanity path that we're on, even with Trump, is not sustainable. And it looks like Trump is doing nothing to repair the deficit. Although he may just be waiting uh, as he picks his battles, we don't know. But the bigger point is where, where, where are we in all of this? And I really think that we are the generation that's, say, 20 years before the shit hits the fan or the collapse. And I don't mean the complete collapse of society or the economic collapse, like some giant depression. We're already in a great uh, recession that is far larger than anything the 1930s ever had. The only difference is we hand out little bits of food to people. The path that we are on now is essentially one of non-replacement, at least for the Europanic peoples. I'll try not to harbor on race. I know I have my own issues there, and I really do believe there is good in all races, and that MGTOWs of all races are welcome. Black, Hispanic, Japanese, Chinese, that doesn't matter. But we have to realize that there is a different reproduction rate and that the uh, European peoples tend not to reproduce in slavery. And we've reached a level of existence of so much regulation, taxed so much to death, that what we have now is slavery. And the treatment of men in particular has gone beyond the pale to the point that marriage is no longer a sane possibility, is that except by deluded souls, lovesick men who have no choice, and beta cocks who succumb to thirst, even if they their life is to be nothing but beta orbiters. And I think you have to think about and realize what's going to happen, because even today, the next generation is going to be 30% smaller. So if you say, uh, I may have to bring up a, a calculator here for a second, so if there's 330 million Americans, and it's currently 70% Europanic, that means we have 231 million Europanic Americans. But the next generation might be as little as 138 million. And the next generation after that, 83 million. That's a span of 40 years from today. So that's roughly 2060. So by well before 2060, on this track with nothing changing, we would be absolutely kaput as a nation because the Europanic people are the higher echelon of taxpayers and inventors and uh, supporters of modern society. I'm not saying the other races don't achieve. There's some great musicians. We've got Thomas Sowell, a brilliant black person. There are, but um, you have to look at the averages also, and things are dismal. Now, that means things have to radically change, and they have to radically change in the next 10 years for any hope of salvation. I think there's two ways things could change. One is that an entrepreneur goes to a place like India, 
where there's very little regulation and tons of poor women, and sets up a uh, surrogate's farm. And basically men can go there, pick out beautiful Scandinavian blonde women who've been certified to be of nice, caring dispositions, artistic, smart, well-rounded, good wife, material, and um, choose a few different ones and have children. And then almost like a, a complete service, because uh, a lot of men are busy in their careers, not have them delivered until they reach age two or even age four, and they're completely over the difficult toddler time. Uh, they're completely toilet trained. They're behaviorally trained. This is a complete service for the busy male worker who's being worked 60 to 80 hours a week in the cube farms. And for this service, it's probably going to cost about $50,000 a child. And men will realize that's just a much safer, cheaper way to go than marriage to reproduce. And these will be older men who are established and went MGTOW and now want families. They, they want to experience the joy of having their own genetic offspring. So uh, this this kind of uh, service uh, will just have to come about by economic necessity. Somebody's going to be smart enough to set up these centers and have, you know, millions of children being born this way. And they're going to be gigantic. They're just going to be like those pods from the matrix where the human batteries reside. It's going to be endless rows of, well, they won't be in little pods, but you know, they'll just be millions of women producing babies. And isn't that how it should be? It's a service that the um, lower uh, skilled third world people can provide to the paying first world people who need the service, who don't have the time for it. So that's one possibility. I know there's some talk about artificial reproduction and all of that. and I, I think that's a hundred years away if you understand the complexities of uh, supporting a fetus and uh, trying to grow it. And also, I think there'd be a much bigger pushback to that because it's just a bit more icky. The other change that's coming in 10 years is if you think sex dolls today are something you have no idea what's going to be the state of the art in 10 years. People are just starting. Today, they're just starting on the first mechanical metal uh, skeletons. They are uh, just starting with the first facial expression heads, moving eyes, the first rudimentary AI and speech. This is the beginning. And in 10 years, they're going to have muscles, like real human muscles. They're going to have fully detailed skulls and skeletal bones, just like humans have. And the intelligence will go way up. It'll be a very simple intelligence, but um, they may even be able to walk and um, do chores. Who knows? I think that would be quite an advanced, expensive model. So... We have to put ourselves in perspective that this is the generation that has probably suffered the most. The level of suffering is outrageous. Now you can say, oh, well, World War II was really bad, and a lot of people died and they suffered, or the Great Depression, oh, the starvation. Yeah, but it's not as widespread as what's going on now. Men's spirits are being just crushed, and um, they have douchebags like Peterson going off calling them men who never grew up and other nonsense. It's not true. It's society that's spiraling out of control. And I think there is a reformation movement afoot, but my prediction would be that Trump will do some good for a while, and then all the dreamers and the Dawkins and all the third worlders pouring in will vote Democrat and it's just all going to fall then into a full feminist society with everything going to the feminists. So we have to keep our perspective of where we are in the history of this. These are dark days. These are the beginning of the end where people will begin to see the catastrophic effects. Already in Italy, the, the reproduction rate is 
uh, I think they have like 0.6 children per couple. And um, it just means every generation, they, they literally get cut in half in terms of population. They have a whole villages that just have a few old women in them. It's just deserted. There's nobody left. And, uh, and now they're filling them up with Africans. And we don't think that's going to go very well. And that's what Europe's doing also. They're going to fill up Europe with Africans to try to replace, try to ameliorate the catastrophic effects of feminist policies. And uh, another gripe is everybody says, oh, well, Europe, France has the highest taxes in the world. and Europe has higher taxes. And they always forget to add the state taxes. They always forget to add the Social Security 14.2% tax. They always forget to add the SSDI 2% tax. They always forget to add all that stuff. If you take your 32% uh, base rate, which is what a lot of the middle class hit gets hit with, uh, even under the Trump reforms, and uh, add all that back in, you're up to just about 60% or over 60%, depending on what state. So we really are... Not only are we in a high-tax nation, but we get nothing for it. We don't get free education to PhD level. We don't get eight-week vacations. We don't get, uh, what else, parental leave at full pay for a year for the father and the mother. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cushy goodness that Europe has gotten because America pays for all the wars and pays for all the military. And they don't. They have all this extra money. So in the old days, all, the, all that extra money went to grandiose benefits and the welfare society. Now all that extra money is going to pay for the non-working African immigrants. And already there are articles coming out how they're very shocked about it. So perspective is very important because within, I think within three or four years, society is going to begin to recognize the nosedive and... Let's call that the title of the video, The Nosedive. Just like the plane I was on that was crashing. I think society is going to have a good sense that uh, things are going tits up really fast, much faster than they thought. And uh, we have to keep that perspective. It isn't like we're weak and what's wrong with us. It's that we're just the tip of a spear that's an avalanche going over a mountainside and we see it and we know the danger and we're running away really fast. So what does that mean for your own life? I think a lot of us are pulling away as in as many ways as possible, pulling away as taxpayers legally, pulling away by leaving the country altogether or a lot of us pull away and just feel isolated and alone, cut off from everyone else who's in the blue matrix. We don't fit in with them. We don't know what to say to them. We, we aren't going to go out to the bars cruising, although some POAs will still do that and some other um, big towels will. But I think a lot of men, once they get into their 40s, they're just sick of it. Of course, Big John, I know he still pulls a little tail here and there. Go, good, 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 good job, Big John. Good for you. God bless you. We miss you. Um, anyways, I think we have to realize we're on the edge of catastrophe and we're looking over the edge and we're just the first people who have seen it. A lot of people are going to say we're just whiny, whiners or complainers or weak or something. But the numbers are going to start coming in, and the numbers are going to be devastating. Even with the beta cucks marrying and having one child, maybe some will have two, but not very many, it's not going to be enough. And the interesting thing about America is this is very hidden, because the demographics of growth from the welfare people is very high. For example, the black population has increased from what was traditionally 9% of the population. Today, it's almost 14%. The, uh, 
the uh, Hispanic population has gone from almost nothing to at least 30 percent and uh, the Asian population is also booming because we're getting literally ship containers full of Chinese people landing at the shores and running into the streets and hiding away. America's going to face some serious shit and it's you, you won't ever be able to be financially protected which the, one of the first things you realize is the cost of America is just too high. You have to be two masters educated professionals doing dopey weenie bureaucratic jobs at big corporations each earning $200,000 salaries to really be making it. And if you're just one person I can almost forget it. Uh, the taxes are too high. The housing is too high. And the jobs aren't realistic either because you can't do them. You can't do those kinds of jobs for 40 years. You just can't. I guarantee you, you'll be beaten to a pulp after 30 years and those kinds of things. So at my age, which is uh, early 50s like Ronan, there's, I would rather be dirt poor than have to go and suffer that crap again. And that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I just want this video to be about perspective that, um, no, we're not all crazy. Things are going tits up and over the cliff demographically. All you have to do is look at Baltimore. Baltimore is a really good example of this. You know, Baltimore is the city of Johns Hopkins University. It's one of the most prestig prestigious universities in America. And now it's a hellhole. It's a shithole where gangs of roving blacks descend on the nicest parts of the harbor and beat the shit out of white people. I'm not saying it's a black versus white thing, but that's Baltimore and that's what's going on. So what does that mean for you? Well... I think it means you should have a good sense that we're right. If you don't believe that we're right, that we we aren't on the right path, just look at the demographic numbers. They're already plain as day. Just do a little research on your own. You'll see that things are in horrific mode, especially for Europe. There is one good thing, though, which is if Europe does get hammered by this in the next 20 years, then uh, it might be there might be enough left of America with the uh, eight years of Trump to pull out of the newest dive. So I have some hope with that. I wanted to tell you the story of uh, Lebanon. I think Lebanon is the, they're the ones that have, uh, is it Hamas? But basically, uh, after one of the uh, wars, they took in, uh, I think they took in, was it 200 to 400,000 Palestinians? Um, and now Lebanon was, a Caucasian country and two generations later they had 15 million uh, non-Lebanese living in the country and it was enough to have whole armies of Hamas and all kinds of bombs going off everywhere and the whole place was trashed the whole country was destroyed it took for it took two generations it's the doubling and the doubling and the doubling it doesn't take too many doubles or you know and triples before suddenly you've got millions and millions of people and i'm sure other people were flooding in the whole time that's just what's happening in america so when trump talks about daca it's only 700,000 don't believe him it's going to be 18 million and it's going to really wreck the nation so you can't do it you can't do it at all I mean, if they had a compromise, I'd say a compromise would be we'll let in 100,000 Dawkins who are already registered and who can confirm their full uh, history, including dates of entry, schools with fingerprints and biometrics. And it'll be prioritized based on the people that have the best uh, data. As a MGTOW, you have to think that you are actually the same as the Patriots fighting against uh, King George the third back in the Patriot days because it's the same shit it's society turned against you back then they were protesting a four percent tax but the bitch to them was that they had to use British money to pay the tax which nobody had 
and uh, and that forced more and more of the system to be done in the British way and British control. That was really what they were fighting over, being slaves to the British bank. And today, we are slaves to our banking masters, the Rothschilds, the Kuhn Loeb's, the Rockefellers, the Carnegie's. Those are our masters. And the DuPonts. Those are the ones that run our country today. And they run the banks. And you might ask, why are the shareholders of the banks, the central bankers, secret? Why is that secret? But it is. And so, we are the resistance. And at the same time, we have to take care of ourselves because we've been bloodied and battered and beaten by a callous society that doesn't give a crap about us, that mutilates men's genitals at birth and doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't give a fuck, chop them off. Don't give a fuck. I don't care if it ruins the poor kid's sex life or uh, who gives a fuck. So we're kind of like seen as th- throwaway donkeys. All these throwaway donkeys have had enough. We're packing up and we're moving on. You guys can do what you want with your tar pits and your slave hell holes, your cube farms, your divorce courts. We don't we don't want your shit anymore. We don't need it. We don't need hugs. We don't need kisses. We don't need fucking. We don't need it. We're done with it. We want to repair ourselves, rebuild, find joy, find some beautiful nature and scenery and sunsets, and feel at peace with the world, and be happy that we got out, found a measured pace of living, not the frantic slave farm living. We found a measured way to be in this world that's sane and peaceful. I hope you enjoyed the sermon fellow monks, and I hope you enjoy the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe if you'd like more videos. Hit the stupid bell and check in the description for how to be a Patreon and support the MGTOW monk. Thanks.